what kind of challenges, if it's so obvious to connect, if it is helpful to, you feel better, you're, you're more productive, you're, you know, uh, less depression. I mean, the obvious things that you're stating and people know when they get together and the good times, they feel great. It's an uplift. Uh, that's what some of the people even are experiencing if there is any kind of isolation Oddly, at this time, it's people can't go to work and work with people. They enjoy that community. Uh, students on campus, we're hearing going, I'm missing the connection. As much as we try social media, it doesn't replace it. But even so, to build an organization such as yourself, a global one, what are you facing in terms of challenges? If the, if the solution is simply getting out, reaching out one more, a phone call, dinner, knocking on the neighbor's door. What do you run into as an organization? Yeah, I think, I think the greatest way to answer that question is to quote uh, uh, Dr. Quam McKenzie at the Wellesley Institute in Toronto, who I met with about a year into my, into my journey with the GenWell project, who said to me, uh, Pete, you're going to be very successful with this movement, but you need to know one thing. Of course, I was on the edge of my chair waiting to hear what it was, and he said, it's going to take time because most people have no idea what you're talking about. And, and he was right. And I don't know what his timeline was. And I don't think he or I had the uh, idea that a global pandemic may be the greatest awakening we've ever had to the importance of human connection. But I think a lot of us took human connection for granted because what the research shows that it's not just those deep relationships that we have with close family and friends that make us happy and healthy, but it's the casual collisions that we have each and every day, whether it's with the Starbucks barista, whether it's with the postman, whether it's with the neighbor across the street, some you know, some you don't know. I will point out that 50% of Canadians don't know their neighbor's name. Only 34% of us actually feel like we have a relationship where we could ask for support or help. You know, so we aren't, we are taking the relationships that are all around us for granted. And mm -hmm. I think the, the COVID-19 experience may have awoken us to just how much we need each other. So that's number one. And then really, uh, as, a, as a movement that is, I'll say, ahead of the curve, new thinking, you know, as the, the global aid approach uh, speaks to, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we are uh, talking about something that we've never been educated on. We were told to go to the gym and we were told to eat better. If you were really advanced, you were told to become a vegetarian and you were told to do some mindfulness practice. Those were really progressive. But now we need people to understand that the information is clearer than ever before. We need each other. And I don't care if you're talking about in the four walls of your house, on your street, in your neighborhood, at the office, the number of people who've said to me that they miss the water cooler, the lunchroom, the coffee machine at the office, uh, we, didn't take, we, we didn't recognize how important those casual relationships and that, hey, how you doing? How's the game? Hey, what about those Leafs? Hey, what about the Rappies? And by the way, they won last night, so let's go Raptors for game seven. But, you know, the reality is most of us weren't taking those uh, relationships seriously. Seriously. And so, you know, if we can get more businesses, if we can get to recognize that importance and extend this information to their staff, if we can get government on board, if we can get individuals to share this message with their communities, the faster we can get this, the greater impact that we can have. Because I really do believe, Mark, we have a freight train coming down the line right now with the challenges that people are going to face, not only with the health crisis from COVID, but the economic impact of a global shutdown. We are going to need each other, like my mom told me, more than ever before. And if we can actually help people truly recognize how important these connections are for their health, their ha happiness, finding solutions and building their resilience, we truly can make the world a happier and healthier place before we get to those, those next challenges.